Shall we to break? And a very good morning to uh, Sean Murphy. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Crucible Theatre. I can't wait for the second session of this match to get into full flow. Well, he hasn't got away with it. It wasn't an easy starter, but the cannon on the other red I think has left the red on that's near the corner pocket. I mean, both players, well, you can see you can get to that, but both players looked a little bit nervous standing backstage. You just want to get out into the arena, and it was a wonderful opening session. Total contrast to the other semi final between the two marks. That was oh. wonderful to commentate on Mark Allen and Mark Selby. The tactical player was outstanding and the break building was also good, but you're looking at something very special here, this 20-year-old Chinese player. For all the world, it looked as if he was going to go 5-1 up. He had bricks of 125, 102, 97. Eight. And then missed uh, an easy red that would have given him a 5-1 lead. So this is a an early chance. No. <coughs> Seventy. Twenty-four. Just a tricky little angle, this, into the middle pocket, because he's fairly close to the red. But safely in. Twenty-five. This is the last loose red, even though there's three reds there. 30. Open at the back of the bunch, they're all covering each other. And it's not a good angle to go into the reds from the pink. You'd need to get on a bog color to cannon into them. 31. See, he's perfectly on the blue, but he, he played for the yellow there. It was a much better ball to come off the side cushion into the pack. The bl pink's right in the way here. If he risked that, Sean, he'd have to hit the pink absolutely full ball, wouldn't he? Yeah, pink's in the wrong place. He may play a delicate control cannon to the red to the left of the cluster. Could knock it on. Yeah, that's what he's played. How's the cannon? Perfect. <laughs> and what a start this is. 36. Judged to perfection, that cannon. 37. I'll have to play another cannon now. 
just to the red to the right of the cluster. Now he could opt to play a deep screw shot into that gap and spread the reds <coughs> far and wide, but the control cannon looks the shot to me. Forty-four. So 44 points to lead. The two loose reds represent another 16. So that takes him to 60 points. But there's still plenty of reds left in that bunch. He'll have to move them. He might do it now. I know he's changed his mind. He was going to screw into those reds for a moment. He did the correct thing there. Got up from the table. Having a little think about it because he's at the point where the next shot could give him this opening frame. And we've seen and mentioned that red, easy red he missed that would have given him a 5-1 lead. So making sure he's clear in his mind. That wasn't a good angle to go into the reds that time. The white art. Just have a look at the white. Looked good there. And then with the top spin and a little bit of side, just arced himself away from the red. So he's not going to win the frame at this visit unless he pulls off an incredible pot. But I don't even think he'll bother with that. See, shall we? 52. Good start, though, from Xi Jiawei. Can't quite see enough of that to take the pot on. But this is going to open the reds up, which Luca Bissell needs. And knocking the black there is a, a bit of a help. Not for Luca. to be very careful here, Sijui. There's a chance to pot this red near the left corner. He could thread the cue ball between red and black and back up towards the ball end, but he's choosing against the red nearest the blue. Has a little less risk attached to it. There's a long pot in. It has been absolutely sensational throughout this tournament, and there's another one. But how still did he keep his head on that? Watch his head when he delivers the cue. Amazing. Wonderful to watch. Okay, he hasn't dropped nicely on a color, but what a pot. Well, even that shot, to force it in at that pace, to give himself a chance of a red Four. to the left corner. Made it look easy, but it wasn't. Five. It's wonderful to watch how a 20-year-old can come out in his first ever semi-final in any competition Never mind the Crucible Theatre and perform like this. 
you really have to admire him. Sam. Eight. And at the moment, everything is going right into the center of the pocket. That's when you know you're queuing well. Sometimes the ball will go in off the angle, but everything's gone in the center of the pocket. Already 63 points ahead, so he only needs one more red to leave Luca needing a snooker. Although the kiss on the blue has spoiled everything, so Luca will be coming back to the table. 64 behind, 59 remaining. Cesar, we 12. An excellent start. Long way off the pot. So take this player a while just to settle in. Needs two snookers at the moment. If he could stay on the blue after he pots this red, wouldn't be a bad thing. What? We'd still only need two snookers. See, the two reds behind the black spot are not ideally placed. He'd love to leave that red near the pink. If he could get the blue and a couple of reds and blacks, that red near the pink is in the perfect spot for a snooker. But look at the two reds. Six. Seven. Might be a chance to pot the black and maybe develop one of the reds. Just depends on the angle he has on the black here. Well, he could drop on. There's one red available there, the one to the right. That's the one he's played for. And if he can get this and the black, every chance of getting a good snooker. So this frame awesome. is far from over if he gets this red and black. Fifty. He 
can leave the white there or the other side and then try and get in behind the black and get that last red away up towards the brown. So the yellow and brown wouldn't be a bad target for the red as long as he gets cover Trenches. with the black. You want that red near a color. Look at myself. 22. Very well played, but without the kiss on the blue, it would have been even more difficult. <coughs> But there's enough room just to slip around the back of this red here. Got to be careful. And he has Foul. slipped around the back of the red. Look at in the perfect place to get the snooker that he needs so he could elect to pot yellow and green now he's going to screw off the green in behind the blue and if he gets close to the blue it's going to be difficult to escape from Look at myself. Ten. He might just be okay this time. He can come off the left side cushion just above the middle pocket. And the green, highly unlikely, he'd slip around the back of the green. But he's got to give this due care and attention. It's a big escape, this. Well played. Where's the cue ball? Needs to pull up. Oh, it might be a snooker. He might have a snooker behind the angle. You don't see that very often. Luca came to the table and he's faced with a snooker. The angle of the pocket has snookered him. He's going to have to swerve this. And he, if he gets too much, he could go in off the green. Are oh, we? It was impossible that. Foul. In fact, the uh, oh. and the frag. Okay. didn't have to do that, but this young Chinese player, Xi Wei. Well, Luca Brassell wasn't happy at the end of the previous round, and he won't be that happy with that shot. He's left this long red for Cijui here. Good cue ball, but this is the type of shot that players practice over and over again for situations like this. Okay, and now we get to see if Luca has cleared his mind of that frustration that he showed at the end of the last frame. Good opportunity, this. Well. Very good opener there from Luca Bissell. Yeah, at the end of that frame, he was he was a little bit unlucky. He didn't mean to knock the white off the table. He was just sort of uh, conceding, and he thought he'd be knocking the white around Eight. the table. But as Steve Davis was saying, Nine. he caught hold of it too well. 
fall. Yeah, he just whips the cue ball here. He's just knocking it around the house and it's just done the worst thing possible and ended up on the crucible floor. He was warned, or at least given a little talking to by the referee, Rob Spencer, at the end of that frame. Sometimes a little thing like that can act as a bit of catharsis almost. Just get it out. It's good to vent like a golfer almost to keep with the golf analogies, you know, when they hit a bad shot and they smack the club into the ground or just vents their frustration and then they're able to carry on with it. It might have done him the world of good. 60. Key shot coming up. Always nice to watch the split on the reds. Got to be careful he doesn't plant a red into the pocket. It's a wonderful split on the reds. Almost planted one into the right corner, but the reds are nicely open, but the pink's tied up and the black just available into one pocket. That red to the right of the black's just in a little bit of an awkward spot. And you can reach this with uh, the extension. He didn't risk trying to hold for the black there. He went to get back up into that uh, top end of the table around the black, and he'll already be playing, planning his route to that red to the left of the black. Black, I think, goes into the uh, left corner. He's just coming around that look. So, if that's the case, then there's not a problem. Yeah, plenty of room there. Twenty-six. So this is a wonderful chance for Luca Bissell to bounce right back in this frame. Thirty-three. I do really enjoy watching Luca play He's so instinctive. 40. Almost completely self-taught. Did have a few people look at his game as a young boy, but his technique's one of his own. And he arrives at the shot and plays what he sees first. And when he gets in a rhythm, he is absolutely 49. devastating. As he proved against the defending champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan, that was... An awesome display 50. from this very talented Belgian player. His highest break in the match so far was in frame six, a 72, and he needed it because he was going to drop 5 1 behind. So he's extremely good under pressure as well. 57. Fifty-eight. Just finished a little straight on the black, so he's got quite a bit to do with the cue ball. You can see, but he's got no problem with cue power, as you can see. But it's gone a little bit wrong 65. here. Just when he was at the stage of. Needing another red in colour. 
Yeah, he played to cannon that red to the right of the pink spot here. Any cannon on that red there now leaves him on the red underneath or the one to the middle. And he thought, if I miss the cannon, I'll be on the red to the middle. And he's not. So if he plays to cut this in, this is extremely tricky. And you'd think if he misses it, he'll be leaving it. Well, he has missed it. Look as he left sun. it, cue ball's come very close 65. to that red. An excellent visit up until that point. Just ran out of position when he played the red to the middle previously. Didn't get on the black ball correctly. I think that red does pass the yellow into the yellow pocket, but it's extremely difficult to control the cue ball. There you see it. And this red down the cushion, this is extremely difficult. It was difficult. You made it look easy. Goodness me. Well, he's powered it in and got himself on the black. What a shot that was. And now he's given himself an opportunity. Well, look is smiling. That's the sort of shot that Luca Bissell would play. So I think he's he's smiling there as if to say, well, that was brilliant. They're just covering each other, these four reds. What sort of angle? He's got a little bit of angle, I think, on the black, and he might be able to force this off the cushion back over towards the reds. And well, he's screwing back, so it's, it's not easy, this. Has he played for a potential plant? Eight. Thought he could have powered it in off the other cushion, but that's what he was looking at. But that's OK if you're behind it. But he's got to cut the first red onto it. This is not straightforward by any means. See, shall we? Eight. He doesn't want to move that red that's near the middle pocket because it's safe at the moment. You'd have to be right in behind that to be able to knock that into the middle pocket. But yeah, I would leave that there as a little bit of insurance and that's what he's doing. Well, he was hoping to knock something safe there, maybe one of the high-valued colours, but it's put everything in the open. Mm, see, he's very interested in this red to the right middle pocket. He's now looking at doubling it across into the other pocket, getting the cue ball back to the balk end. Looks like he can just drop it into the middle pocket on your screens there, but... It's an extremely narrow angle of attack into the middle pocket from there. There you can see it's very tight into the middle from there, but he's sighting this red down the table. I think he's just playing a safety shot. Mm, he's caught that all wrong, much too thick. On the red, the red has followed the cue ball back up. And has he got away with that one? He has. So uh, another little slice of good fortune there. Fluke to snooker in the previous frame. So the run of the ball favouring Seizure Wee at the moment. But the position of the balls favouring Luca Brussel at the moment in this frame.
any color will leave Xi Jiawei needing a snooker. And this was a little beauty he pulled out there. And doesn't have to force the brown in. He'd still like to get on to another red to make absolutely certain. But that was key that he just rolled that brown in. 62 ahead with just 59 remaining. So no Five. heroics with the positional side of that last shot. Potential double. Look at herself five on the frame. And <laughs> CJ Wei stays in his seat and concedes the frame. So look at Bissell. Bounced right back in this frame. CJ Wei to break. Yeah, they're wonderful players to watch, wonderful attacking players. But listen, you don't get through to the semi final of a world championship without having a a very good tactical game as well. Oh, the two reds. Well, they're not a plant, but caught that bit on the thick side. He might be able to take this pot on. I think he can avoid the cannon on the black. Needs to pull up once it lands on the balk line or just past it. The cutback is quite tricky. Yeah, the only thing in his favour here is he just has to pot the brown. The natural angle of the cue ball will bring it down for the red by the black. So, but even he just decided that's too risky. Caution being shown. Something we're used to. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward for Luca Bissell to just land into the bunch of reds. It's just about okay, but he could have done with blocking off this escape route down the left side of the table. And he'd gone between the yellow and brown. He would have achieved that. Oh, this red's going over the right corner pocket and one over the middle pocket. Has he covered everything? I don't think so, but he can get through to that. But the black is awkward. You'd have to get the black into the same pocket <coughs> as the red. Pink's a possibility, but this is not a straightforward situation here. But Aggie can only see the one red for this corner. And this would take some queuing to pop that and screw back and leave a potential pink. Well, we know he's got plenty of cue power. This is the sort of shot that Luca would take on, Judd Trump would take on. Oh. Yeah. There's always going to be difficult I don't think the black goes. It's very, very tight. Mm. This one, well, there's a little bit of a pocket there, but I don't think that goes, Sean. No, that doesn't pop. But it's close enough that you could almost talk yourself into it. You 
would think a defensive shot is coming next. It's a risky business trying to predict what these two players are going to do. Is he sighting the blue, blue or the green? Thinking. Well, that is absolutely outrageous. Outrageous. To even go for this. Let alone get it. Goodness me. Six. <laughs> it's wonderful to watch. And the pink's available as well here as the blue. So. And that one shot has given himself an excellent opportunity. That was as good a shot as I've seen throughout this whole World Championship. Well, I mean, to have the courage to play that was incredible. But even more so, the thoughts of Luca Brussel there, he will have been sat there wishing Seizure we to go for that blue, egging him on. Thinking, well, there's no 14. chance he's going to get this. Leave me reds everywhere. And he has to watch the blue sail in the pocket. Incredible. Twenty. Twenty. Wonderful series of little stun and screw shots here. Concentrating on the pink. We'll leave the black for the time being. And the only problem, the angle this time he has on the pink. He's having to leave himself over the left side of the table. On well, his dead straight on the pink. So. Twenty. So removing this one opens the black up for a few shots time. Twenty seven. Into the same pocket that he's taking the red. So now this is a very good chance. Twenty-eight. I mean, the blue that he potted deserves to win any frame. And it's been talked about many times throughout this championship. I mean, you know, one thing about his great potting and going for these shots and getting most of them, but the composure that he's showing for a 20-year-old debutant here at the Crucible. He's walking around as if he's been doing this all his life. And it can be, become a bit unnerving as the opponent in the corner. Keep expecting him to crack, and it just doesn't come. Forty-two. Fifty. This is a player that uh, had to qualify through tour school in 2019 and then he lost his place on the tour in 2021 and a couple of years later here he is in the semi-final of the World Championship at the Crucible Theatre. What a wonderful story but what a wonderful talent. Yeah, 
Okay, it's just the first shot in the break. He's just taken a, a little bit of time over this one. Just needs to get this one correct. Yeah, that was the shot. That couldn't go wrong. He, he, he looked originally at leaving the cue ball a bit further away, but played into there. He was 56. on three reds with that shot. And now it's hard to see this going wrong. 57. Just the black and one more red for the frame. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. Well, that's the frame safe, and now he can concentrate and possibly get his third century in this semi-final. Seventy-two. 73. Reds available into the same pocket as the black. Perfectly played. 80. 81. He may leave this red, the left side of the table, dropping behind it because 86. he's very good with his left hand. 88. So he'll just pop the pink, drop in behind the red, and we'll see him switch hands. He looks very, very good. 86. Well, let's see if he'll maybe 96. screw back for the blue from here. We're going to run through for the black. Nice. Yeah, run through for the black. <laughs> what a wonderful century break. I think we need two. One hundred and four. I mean, I keep going back to that blue, Sean. That was incredible. And uh, love to seven. hear what uh, Steve Davis has got to say about that shot on the blue. Six times world champion in the studio with Seema. He would have enjoyed that blue as everyone in the Crucible did. And I'm sure you all did watching at home. This is magnificent watching this player. Don't go in the middle, please. Don't go in the middle. It 116. Didn't. 122. Well, you won't see. What a performance and what a century break in this frame. And see Joe Wade. Well, this is a big frame coming up the last before the mid session interval. And another poor break off from Luca Brussel in a frame that he will desperately want to win. See your weekend. Pop both of those reds. Up to him which one he fancies. One to the left middle looks the slightly easier. Whoa. Yeah, another excellent pot. But similar to the previous frame, we're all eulogising about Cijoui's long potting and long blues. It was an opportunity granted to him from a lax safety shot from Luca Brussel, it has to be said. And Luca may be sitting in that seat for a while if he gets on the red next to the black here. Well, he's played for the two to the right, but 
in a couple of shots time he'll be on that red that's Five. closest to the black and it'll be another opportunity once again switching hands looks very good with his opposite hand six Thirteen. Fourteen. Yeah, you can get on that red this time. Well, Sean, you've played them here in this year's World Championship. You've played them in the UK Championship. Have you seen them play as well as this? He must have played well 20. to beat you on those two occasions. I've only ever seen him play phenomenal snooker. Every time I watch him, he plays incredibly well. 22. And when I did my press conference following my defeat to him a week ago, I said I think he's going to be the first world champion from China. Well, certainly the way he's playing at the moment, you wouldn't argue with that. And Stephen Hendry's the 29. youngest ever world champion at 21 years of age. And this young man's 20. Yeah, we call the Crucible the theatre of dreams. Um, what a dream story that would be, but there's an awful long way to go in this semi-final. Now he's just looking where he wants to leave the cue ball to play the black and split the reds open. Don't think that red to the side of the pack is possible, maybe into the green pocket. It's very tight to the right middle pocket. He can leave a nice, what we call a high black, half ball black and play it with top spin, a bit of right hand side into the cluster. And you wouldn't bet against another frame winning break here if he gets the next couple of shots right. Well, he's played the shot that Sean suggested, so black with 38. right hand side, top spin. He played one earlier where he, he arced the ball round the red, so let's see how this works. Watch the white as it sort of arcs towards the pack there. They're not an easy pack to split the way they're all straight across the back. Well, have a look at that. It's a wonderful 45. split, but it's finished a little awkward. If he wasn't hampered, there wouldn't be a problem here. Just pop this red, stun over behind the black, but he's hampered, so he's coming around to look at the one into the right corner. Yeah, the red near the black's the easier pot, of course, but he can't avoid running into the black, and of course, that can go wrong. So, playing the much more difficult pot, it looks, because it offers a more guaranteed position. A little bit shorter pace this time, so he's going to have to negotiate the bolt colours. The natural red to play on here is the one to the right of the pink. Screw the cue ball between yellow and brown. Just got a bit too much screw on it. You could see the cue ball very nearly hit the yellow. He is on this red, but that's not where he intended it to be. He 
again slightly out of position looking at the more difficult red very measured taking this time making the correct decision his time he studied both reds and decided this is the one that would yeah, sure. win him the frame he spotted something on the cue ball there but this is one of the most exciting players i've been coming to the crucible theater since 1977 sean and i've enjoyed watching this young player as much as any match i've ever seen here Well, praise doesn't come much higher than that, does it? You've been here since the start, Dennis, at the Crucible, along with JV 59. and Cliff Thorburn, and a few others. Steve, of course. 60. So to say something like that shows how high in regard you hold him. And this black, and one more red, and it's another frame on the scoreboard. And similarly to other great break builders. It's the speed at which he does it as well. The scoreboard changes so fast. Seven. It's another frame gone. 68. What a performance this is. See, Luca Brasel's not doing anything wrong. He's just not getting a chance at the moment. 73. 74. It's okay, the red will go into the right 18. middle pocket. Eighty two. You can just sense he wants another century break. He's already had three in this semi final. He's made seven in this year's World Championship. Eight but to be performing like this at the one table situation is magnificent. 89. What a shame. <laughs> what a century break, what a performance from this very, very talented 20 year old Chinese player. And he goes to the mid-session interval, leading Luca Brasel. Well, Luca Brasel will be hoping that the mid-session interval can change things somewhat because <laughs> he's had everything thrown at him in those first four frames. And that's not the best safety shot. He doesn't want to be sending that red. It needs to pull up. And he's OK. Almost sent it over the pocket. Yeah, he's he's done precious little wrong, Luca. Just a couple of little safety shots that didn't work out as he intended. But his opponent was awesome. But listen, Luca can come out and do the same in this little mini session. Luca as he 
seeks to turn the tide of this match momentum all with Si Jui at the moment is that he needs to win this session 3-1 to come out of it with no damage done and still be two behind. Yeah, what Lucas' thoughts should be. I was 10-6 down and against the greatest player that's ever picked a snooker queue up. And I come back against him and, uh, well, he blitzed Ronnie away. Incredible display. Well, Ronnie congratulated him at the end of the match and wished him all the best because Ronnie's a great admirer of Luca Bissell, but he'll also be a great admirer of C. Jean Wei. This is Ronnie's uh, style of snooker that both these players play. Difficult queuing there, difficult starter. <coughs> Couple of potential pots into the right corner. If he's got an angle to be able to drop on the black, he may look at it. He's looked at the safety shot, but he's back looking at this half chance. Now, where's the red going to finish? Yeah, he's got away with that. He might be in a little bit of bother, but <laughs> makes a big difference that, you know, when you have a go at something like that and you miss it, you can always stick it up. But it's usually the case when you're playing really well, you don't leave it on. Another chance at this red, past the blue, similar to the shot he played a few shots ago and missed by some distance. Fancy him getting this one. I fancied him to get this, having just had the same shot through a few shots ago. He'd had a bit of a sighter at it. And if he can find his way to that red on the black spot in a few shots time, and that will lead him to the black. This could quickly turn into a frame winning chance. He's played for that red now. I didn't think he was going to do that. And he's on it. He can't get to the black from it, but he's there. Three. I think the black is available into the left-hand corner, so can play up for the blue, back for a red, and be on the black in three shots' time. Four. Just coming up a little bit short. If he rolls the blue and he's got the red to the right of the pink and reds, he's coming around to have a look at the angle he could leave for that red. Failing that, the only other option is to power this in and go around the angle, so. He 
He's so confident in this type of pot. He makes them look so easy, no. but you know, they can be missed. Seeing everything so clearly at the moment. His technique is so sound. You're surprised if he misses one, but seven. Six. It really is astonishing how well he is playing here. Eighteen. Yeah, he's actually very Mark Selby-like in his technique. Gets down, finds the spot on the cue ball, a couple of waggles, and then the strike. And he does that on every shot. And of course, building in that level of consistency and repeating the technique on 25. every shot means there's so little to go wrong every time. Twenty-six. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Ninety-three percent positional success so far for Cijoui. That's going to get the job done. Keep that cue ball somewhere near where you want it to be makes the next shot easier. Forty. Forty-two. Now probably play for the red underneath the black here and at some stage he's going to have to maybe cannon those reds by the pink although the one there to the right of the four stuck together looks like it's potable into this right hand corner pocket the one next to it 49. maybe into the left middle so perhaps he doesn't need to cannon anything Luca will be praying that he needs to Fifty. He's got the angle to do anything he wants here. He's had a look at the angle for the cannon. If he catches the two reds to the right of those four, it'll open everything up. Or he can play for the single red. His choice. He's on the red, but I'm not sure about the angle. As we show you, the cannon played there. Can he push through these to get onto the black? The pink's tied up at the moment, but it's just the wrong angle. He's looking at the possibility of screwing back to make sure he doesn't leave himself awkward. Now he's powering through these. Too much. Very With difficult to judge those. He looks away in disappointment, but he didn't have to play it at any pace. But you're never sure when you're that close to them. You just sort of think, you know, make sure I don't go on the cushion. And it's what he did. Yeah, and this is the only part of the game at the moment where he's perhaps not 10 out of 10. Just this section of the game where you've built up a really Yellow good ball, lead thank you. and you've got to choose a good safety shot. What's this yellow on a cushion? See, shall we? 58. Well, that was nice to see. Luca Bissell came to the table, tapped the table in appreciation of that. Fine break. <coughs> 
Somehow Luke is going to have to find a telling safety to try and force an error from his opponent. Good cue ball, but the red is potable into this corner. It's not an easy one by any means, and it's a very risky one. If he takes it on, he'll be heading over towards the black or the other red, so he'll have a think about it. And if he can see a path back down the table, he'll take it on, but it's highly unlikely that he would avoid everything if he takes that pot on, so he's looking at it alternative and he's now looking at the potting angle of this one near the pocket but keep an eye on the cue ball if he takes this on well maybe he's now thinking about not taking it on leaving the white in the jaws there So he's thought about all the options. You make your mind up. Still trying to figure out which is the best choice. Here we go then. Again, a little smile from Luca, appreciating that unbelievable pot that his opponent has just knocked in. Don't know if he's on the pink. Well, he was. <laughs> and just needs one more red. I mean, that was an astonishing Seven. pot. He took on. Wasn't sure what was happening the cue ball, but once you knock it in, always a chance you can finish on a colour. Eight. I mean, wonderful shot. Knew he couldn't avoid the black. A little flick on the red, left him on the pink. Fortune favours the brave. Fourteen. Fifteen. I keep waiting for him to slip up, Sean. Yeah, well, I, I, I just keep expecting the realisation of what he's achieving here to land on his shoulders at some point. I mean, it just doesn't seem to be happening. It's incredible. He's breaking new ground here that we haven't really seen. Not for a long time, anyway. 30. Thirty-one. For a debutant to be performing like this at the highest level. 38. Well, you can't pot everything. He's, but that's <laughs> yeah. He's come out down for the mid session interval. It's all systems go again. And see your way. Feel a little bit tired or jaded from it, especially going through that final frame the other night. But he seems to be full of life still. Well, Jack Jones, uh, another young player, ran out of steam. He felt as if he'd sort of got a bit tired towards the end. But this this young lad's uh, on a high at the moment, so he's, he's pumped up with the adrenaline, even though he may not be showing it. all at sea at the moment he's just absolutely dazed and confused with what's going on can't hit a good shot right now hit the blue off the break off and every time he makes a mistake 
he's being punished. He needs to find some way of changing the momentum here. Luca hasn't potted a ball for over 40 minutes. There's the comparison of the scores and the breaks so far in this match. It's incredibly one-sided. Cesar has done all the scoring, really, and he's that's why he's good for his 9-4 lead. The other thing with C, sure we get into nine means that he is guaranteed to finish this session ahead. Doesn't matter what happens now. Just a question of how far. Great length with the safety shot and he's sort of smiling to himself. He, he can't believe what he's up against at the moment, every time he comes to the table, there's nothing easy to look at. At the moment, Luke is going to have to be patient and somehow try and force an error from his Outstanding opponent. Oh. He was in all sorts of trouble there. That was the only way he could get out of it, was just to play that pot and hopefully get a safety, but there's no straightforward safety get the black back into play twice across over behind the green good it's shot so that's the best he could do from there but is there a potential pot he can't get to the one for the right corner can't get to the one to the middle but he can get to that one and it's a similar shot to the one he knocked in. The white will be going into the black and reds. Is he going to take this on? He is. Now, oh, where's it going to finish? Surely he hasn't covered everything. Well, if he's covered everything, I think there might be one possible pot. It could have been easier, though. Whoa. Forty-two minutes since his last pot. But make no mistake, this is a player Six. that can come right back into this now. Seven. It's not a straightforward chance. But at least he's at the table. And this is where the mental strength of a snooker player is tested. Luca needs to summon every ounce. Twelve of effort and concentration here. This match, a long way to go, but it is in danger of drifting away from him. And he needs to summon his best. Thirty. That's a great shot. Lovely creative shot there to bring the black into play. Twenty. Twenty-one. Just let the Q 
cue ball run out of ideal position. This is awkward to get to the next red. He could run into the three underneath the black, take a chance. Can try and screw off the cushion for a red to the middle. Well, in the end, he played the power forcing shot to get to the red at the bottom of that cluster. And every red's going to move here when he pots this. Yeah, he's just lost the cue ball slightly. As is the way when you're struggling, struggling for a bit of form. Game doesn't give you anything easy. This was a good pot. But he's going to need another one now on this black. Fabulous. What a shot that was. Having sat out basically the last three frames as a bystander to pop that one off the cushion. That was fabulous. 37. And if you could go and win this frame at this visit, this will send a message to C. Jouy that Luca is here to be counted. Luca Bissell. Oh, I'm sure you heard that. 37. Somebody sneezed as he was on his backswing. That is incredible. Incredible time to do that. Eight. Oh, the timing there. When I mean, you got a sneeze, I suppose. But the timing Nine. certainly affected the shot there. So there's three accessible reds and three difficult reds near the cushion. 16. I'm wondering if he's pushed potential plant on. He's coming around to have a look at that. Because well, that's for a few shots time, but he tried to develop those three reds. He didn't, but that's a possibility for a few shots time. Or he can leave the same shot 25. again, but he's straight on the black. Does he fancy the plant? Having another look. Yeah, I think that plant is actually quite awkward to make. I think what he wanted to do was leave the cue ball higher on the black here to split those three reds and knock the second red to the pocket. A change of plan here. He just has to be careful if he's playing the plant. 32. And I don't think he is. I think he's playing the single red. I cannot explain how difficult that shot is at that pace. A wonderful shot. And if he gets a good angle on the blue, he can cannon those two reds. 40. Not sure. Little shake of the head tells you that he hasn't got the perfect angle on this. If he runs through, I don't think he can get the white on the blue as he would like. As you can see from that picture there, he can't get the other side of the blue.
Now the next shot coming up would be very special because he didn't fancy the plant. If he can cannon the Reds out from this position, it'll be amazing. Yeah, that's the type of shot he's looking at. Needs to avoid the pink and green with right-hand side spin. Come down and move those Reds. Any cannon on the Reds, you think he'd knock one onto the corner. Well, he cannon the Reds with the blue. Big mistake that. Cesar What's it going to cost him? 41. Yeah, he put everything into the uh, cannon there and missed the blue because he had an awful lot of right hand side on it. Beautifully played shot because the red was tied up there. Six. Seven. Love to finish dead straight on this yellow. Because then he could leave the white where the yellow is or just bring it back a little bit. And awesome. I think he played that perfectly. Sixteen. Just gotta be aware the pink there, he doesn't snooker himself. Nice. Well, showing a lot of character here, Luca Bissell. He'll be feeling a little better now. He's on the I'm afraid. Look at this He needed to stop the rot, and he's done that with style. Okay, he missed that pink in the middle, but he'll be delighted. Well, it's been a fascinating encounter between the two so far, and back we go. And not for the first time in this session, this long red has been left. And they are very, very difficult, those shots, but the players will consider that a missed opportunity. And of course, when you miss something like that and things are going against you, you always leave the red. Well. He must practice quite a bit with his left hand because he looks good. He strikes the ball very well. A lot of the modern day players do that, switch hands. There was only a few many moons Three. ago that used to switch hands and they only did it on certain shots because they didn't like using the rest. But these boys just switch and they don't look much different with the other hand. Four.
No, he wasn't sure of the black spot when it's re-spotted with cover the red. You have to try and make the judgment and... 11. That red won't pot. He thought it would. So he miscalculated there. He could have played for the loose red to the left of the pink. But he couldn't quite see where the spot was. See, shall we? 11. Luca having a look here, what the second red's going to do. It's going to come off the reds and hit the red bad black, possibly go towards the left corner pocket. Mm, and he put all his effort into monitoring where that red was going to go. Caught the red far too thick. And that cue ball's a good three feet from where it should have been. And a chance here for Cijoui been deadly from this range so far. Now is he going to leave this red? Yeah, he holds his hand up to apologise. But he was a long way off the pot. Well, this is a brave shot that Luca Brussel is looking at here. All right. Is it in the middle? I thought for a minute he'd got away with that, but there is a red potable into the left middle pocket. The only problem is the blue won't go past that red to the right middle pocket. If he's dead straight on this, can't do a lot with the cue ball. Just got a slight angle, a little bit hampered. But even the green would be okay. He could maybe hold for the long blue. Yeah, the green is okay because of the red that's near the right middle pocket there. Yeah, it's a bit of a high tariff shot to pot the green, stun it off one cushion. Back down for the red over the middle. He's a bit straighter on it than it looks. So he's looking at screwing this back. And this is missable. And that one just wriggled in. It used all the pocket. Four. Not sure if the pink pot's to the left-hand corner pocket. It's a bit more angle on this red. It's going to be tough to get to a colour. That's why he's actually looking at this red to the right corner pocket. The red over the middle seems the obvious one. Five. Oh, struck that so nicely. What a shot. Not many players would have chosen that red. They would have taken the one over the middle pocket. But that shows you the confidence this young player has in his cue action and potting ability. Well, we know that the pink is available. The black's out of commission at the moment. So it'll be... Sir. Far from straightforward to make a sizable contribution here.
11. He could take the risk of candling the black and red. He'd be guaranteed to be on them, but I think he's just going to pick them off here. Seventeen. Must be on the pink because he's stood there. From our picture, it looks a bit tight. But from that picture, it shows you he can clearly pot the pink. Now it's getting a little more difficult. Twenty-three. Well, this is not easy. This one up near the corner pocket. Got to judge these correctly. They can wobble in the jaws. Twenty-four. <laughs> he made that look easy. It might look from that picture that straightforward. Far from it, Sean. Well, the other thing is, as he potted it, I looked straight at Luca, who was just sat there thinking, what have I got to do here? He would have known like we did, 26. but that red was very missable, despite its proximity to the pocket. Seizure, we just got down and knocked it in. Incredible. Twenty-seven. Well, that certainly uh, hit the back of the pocket with a lot of pace. <laughs> and the angle he forced there. I mean, Luke is smiling away again. He's in admiration of what this young man's doing here. And, and Luca can't do anything about it sitting in the seat. No, and it's, that's the point, Dennis, isn't it? That's what makes our sport, 30s. I think, one of the most difficult single-player sports in the world because there's nothing you can do about it. In almost every other sport, you get to have another go straight away. Yeah, I used to have that discussion with the great Peter Alice, who loved his snooker one of the greatest golf commentators ever and which was the more difficult sport we used to have the conversation about it and I used to say Peter if you had a good shot at golf I can hit a good shot at golf if you're clearing the snooker table up I can't do anything about it 38 Left-handed again, and look at the kiss on the pink. That wasn't as played. He held his hand up on the way around there to apologise, but once again, another cracking left-handed shot. Forty-five. This looks like 
and that green 50. was frame ball. Fifty-five. See Zoe. Fifty-five on the front. Well, Lucas stays in his seat. Can't do anything about it while you're sitting there because this twenty-year-old sensation. Luca Baselt's a break. Pretty good break-off shot this time from Luca Brazil. Yeah, if he wins this frame, it'll be the same score line that he had against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the quarter-final. He hasn't made many mistakes, even with his tactical game today. Can Luca capitalize on that one? Just about to say it was a very interesting choice playing that one with the rest. This is the red to play. Well. Seven. Yeah, the quarterfinal was a race to 13 frames, and he was 10 6 behind. It's the first to 17 frames in the semi final. Regardless of what happens in this frame, he is 50. far from out of this semi final. 16. He's just trying to get on that red there with the angle to split the other reds. 23. 24. Could only develop one that time, so he's going to have to hit them again soon. 15. And that cue ball's just gone three or four inches too far. I don't think the red passes the 15. pink into the yellow pocket, so this red to the left middle very, very tricky. No. Look at Brussel. He's just lost the cue ball there, and he has left this red to the yellow pocket. Yeah, I was just about to say, I think he may have gotten away with that, and then the red finished up over that corner pocket to the left of the yellow. Well. Yeah, this was the one where he just ran slightly out of position. He wanted to be straighter on that for the middle pocket. but uh, He's left the white in, I was going to say no man's land, but with this fella, he's looking at the yellow. There's nothing safe on the table. It's actually the red and black causing the problems here. He has to reach over those. Referee Rob Spencer on hand to make sure he doesn't touch either of those balls. And that's another test. Past the flying colours. That was awkward. Three.
four. Well, he's in again. And there's three more available reds. The one near the black goes into the right corner. The one at the back of the bunch is available. He's just having a little think about how he's going to plan his route here. He's got a few choices. Well, he's hit that too hard. That's the first so. careless shot that Xi Wei has played in this match. He, he's smiling to himself. He, he hadn't quite made his mind up which of the reds to play for. And he's in between both of them. matter if you run out of position when you pot like this. Seventy. Played that nicely in potting this red, he's going to disturb others. Well, he didn't actually disturb anything there. Just brushed off the reds. He'd love to have that one again. But if he can get on the loose red and up for the pink, they're in a perfect place to be attacked from up there. Yeah, those reds are set like it's like a trick shot you set up. And you pot, put the black in the middle of them and pot it into the middle pocket. The, more or less the way they're sitting there. Twenty-six. So, all about the cannon. He could do with not catching an absolutely full ball, but we know how he plays these. And that could be okay if it goes to the left middle pocket. It's perfect. Yeah, it must go. Oh, just. There wasn't much room past that red. Forty one. Forty-two. Yeah, again, showing great composure here. He will know the importance of this frame. If he could take a six-frame lead into the third session tonight, you'd think he might have broke the back of this match. Did the right thing there, took a walk around the table just to compose himself. Wasn't because he didn't know what he was doing, he just wanted to give himself an extra 30 seconds. Composure beyond his years. 49. Won the first session, five frames to three. And every possibility 55. now of taking this session 6-2. What a performance, but he's not over the line yet in this frame. Luca waiting patiently. He it does this every now and again where he hangs his head. He's not pleased with the shot he's played, but it looks okay, even if he has to cannon the Reds. He looked to see if the red nearest the cue ball was available. So 
so I'm not sure why he was hanging his head because it was okay, it was perfect. 63. 64. Just the black needed. Seventy-one. A little bit of adrenaline there. <coughs> now looking at the scoreboard. See, oh. shall we? Well, the red would have make 71. absolutely certain of this frame. Well, two snookers needed Eight. at the moment. Luca Brassel, eight. Yeah, and credit to Luca Brassel here for carrying on. There's plenty of players who wouldn't have an endured this session so far, needing two snookers. A lot of players would have shook hands. He hasn't stopped trying. This yellow's close, though. The yellow's close. Luca was round at the table, ready to play the shot. And there's a gap, might pot the green. Oh. Well, where's the brown gonna go? Well, in the pocket, Nine. of course. Raised the butt of the queue and knocked the brown in as if it was over the pocket. But listen, it's going to be fascinating Four this six. evening. Luca Bissell can come out and do the same thing. That CJ has done. But what a wonderful session Thanks for the 20 year old <laughs> Chinese player. He beats the Belgian bullet, Luca Bissell, by 6 2.